Here are the top stories for today from the Philippine News Agency. We begin with President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr.'s green light on the Department of Health's flagship initiative to fortify the country's healthcare system. This is the President approved the implementation of the Philippines Health System Resilience Project Phase 1. During a meeting at Malacanang Palace, Marcos says the program is a direct application of lessons learned from the pandemic and is specifically designed for the Philippines' unique healthcare needs. As chair of the National Economic and Development Authority or NEDA board, Marcos says the 27.9 billion peso project aims to enhance health emergency prevention, preparedness and response particularly in vulnerable areas. The project will roll out initially in 17 provinces focusing on areas with limited access to health care. It will also include a comprehensive plan for project management, monitoring and evaluation, ensuring a more resilient and responsive health system for all Filipinos. Staying with updates from the top office, President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. extends his heartfelt gratitude to the Israeli government for its quick response in assisting Filipinos affected by escalating tensions in the Middle East. In a phone call with Israeli President Isaac Herzog, Marcos expressed his appreciation for Tel Aviv's care and support for Filipinos living and working in the country during these difficult times. While details of their discussion were not fully revealed, President Marcos underscored the historic and strong ties between the Philippines and Israel, calling the country a trusted bilateral partner in the region. He expressed hope for peace in the conflict-affected areas and reiterated the Philippines' commitment to further strengthening relations with Israel. The President also urged Filipinos in Israel and Lebanon to take advantage of the government's repatriation program while flights are still available. He assures that the Department of Foreign Affairs is fast-tracking the process and the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration is chartering flights to bring home 162 distressed OFWs this October. The Commission on Elections has received a total of 104 special action cases seeking the declaration of certain aspirants in the 2025 elections as Nuisance Bets. The poll body adds it has also filed 117 special action cases motu proprio to declare someone as a Nuisance candidate. Meanwhile, 24 cases were filed for the cancellation of certificates of candidacy of certain aspirants. One case has also been filed for disqualification. Comelec Chair George Garcia has committed to resolve cases involving nuisance candidates by the end of November this year. The Comelec has released an initial list of 66 senatorial aspirants whose names may be listed in the official ballot. There are 183 senatorial hopefuls and 156 party lists that filed their certificates of nomination and acceptance. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources is looking into the illegal mining operations in Camarines Norte reportedly run by Chinese nationals. Environment Secretary Maria Antonia Yulo Loizaga confirmed the arrest last Sunday of 11 Chinese nationals who were reportedly working for an illegal mine. The interagency task force who raided the mine says that Chinese workers were carrying tourist visas throughout their stay in the Philippines. Yulo Loizaga also expressed concern that the Chinese-run mining operation that started in 2023 had obtained a permit from local authorities. She says they are operating beyond the area covered by their permit. For his part, Paracale Mayor Romeo Moreno confirms that the Chinese workers had no legal working papers and the mineral plant where some of the workers were found is expanding without proper authorization. Moreno says preliminary findings indicate that uranium, a highly regulated mineral, is allegedly being excavated at the site. The DNR previously reported similar arrests of foreign workers in the uplands of Cagayan de Oro and Iligan cities last year. Yulo Loizaga says they are conducting a case buildup against those illegal mining operations. As the holiday season approaches, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority has suspended roadworks to address the expected increase in vehicular traffic. 
MMDH Chair Don Altes says road right-of-way excavation works would be suspended from November 18 to December 25. The suspension includes road reblocking works, pipe laying, road upgrading, and other excavation works that may block or disrupt the smooth flow of traffic. Only flagship projects of the government, bridge construction and repairs by the Department of Public Works and Highways, flood projects, and emergency leak repairs are exempted. Aside from suspending road works, all 131 malls in Metro Manila will adjust their operational hours from November 18 to December 25. The MMDA said malls will open at 11 a.m. and close later or at their usual schedule. All mall-wide sales will also be suspended, although individual stores inside malls may hold unannounced sales. Meanwhile, Altes said they would request the Department of Transportation to adjust public transport operating hours, especially the EDSA bus carousel, LRT1, LRT2, and MRT3, to accommodate late-night commuters. And that's the latest and biggest stories on the PNA headlines. For more news updates, visit our website pna.gov.ph or our Facebook and X account, Philippine News Agency. The PNA headlines is also streamed via the Silbisho Facebook page. You may also watch the PNA headlines through the Philippine News Agency's YouTube account and via the News and Information Bureau website under PNA News. Don't be naughty and be nice because it's 69 days before Christmas. I'm Bench Bondok. This is the PNA Headlines, bringing stories that unite the nation.